Welcome to our webinar, Preparing for Health and Wellbeing at Texas Tech. We are excited to have all of you joining us today. My name is Christine Self with Parent and Family Relations, and joining me are Jennifer Weaver from Student Health Services and Kayla Glock from the Student Counseling Center. This webinar is part of our Red Raider Family Webinar Series, where we will share information on topics of interest to parents, families, and supporters of our students. We hope this webinar will help you understand some great resources at Texas Tech to help keep your Red Raiders physically and mentally healthy. We plan to keep the webinar to about 30 minutes or so. We hope to have time for uh, questions at the end of the session, so feel free to use the Zoom Q&A feature to ask questions throughout the presentation, and we will get to those. We will also share contact information so that you can follow up as needed. We are recording this session and posting it to our website so that you'll be able to review it again later or share with others. I'll also email the recording link to the email that you use to register for the webinar. So without further ado, I'm going to get us to the beginning of our presentation instead of the questions at the end, and I'll turn it over to Jennifer. Hello, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, again, she said, I'm Jennifer Weaver. I work in administration at Student Health. Uh, you can always email me or if you have any questions specifically about it, uh, something specific about your student that you might not want to put on there, uh, which we completely understand, you can contact me at jennifer.weaver at ttuhsc.edu. So um, what we talk a little bit about student health. We are the primary care clinic on campus. We have psychologists, uh, nurse practitioners, board certified physicians. Um, Excuse me, I'm sorry, I've been trying to get over bronchitis. <clears throat> um, we do, uh, we, most of our um, services are basically like, like you would go to your primary care physician for, um, we have lab and x-ray services available. And so anytime you would go to your doctor, you would call us for the exact same thing. And so all of our um, clinicians are board certified in, in all of their fields. Um, so the next slide, let's see what we have. Sorry, I haven't read this one. So um, we have face-to-face -face visits. We also have telehealth visits. Uh, we are the primary care physician on, uh, on the campus. We have, some of our clinicians are considered urgent same day so that if a student needs to have seen, seen on that day, we do have physicians available for just that see only student same day. But we also have clinicians that they can be seen basically regularly so they become routine like their primary care physician. physician. So we also have preventative care for women and women's health. Um, we do have a sports medicine clinic that can help with any kind of injuries that the student may um, encounter while they're here at Tech. We uh, see a lot of Lyme scooter injuries, a lot of rec sports injuries. So we do have certified people who will, can work specifically with um, those kind of injuries. Uh, students who are going to be traveling abroad, we do have some criteria that they have to go through. So we do have travel medicine so that if they are going to go study abroad, then we can help them transition into whatever country they're going to be going to. We have a nurse clinic that so if a student isn't feeling well, they need their blood pressure checked or if they have immunizations like their meningitis shot that they need before they come to campus, we have a clinic that is set up specifically for that. We do have behavioral health uh, services. Um, we have therapy through some of our nurse practitioners. We have a psychologist on staff. We also work with the psychiatry clinic over at the Health Sciences Center to show that our students can meet any kind of needs. So if they are seeing a physician, I encourage you to, um, and they have medication, I encourage you to talk to our behavioral health team so that we can determine how we can continue with those services once they come to Texas Tech after they leave their uh, position at home. Um, we also have a uh, specific people clinicians that work with um, alcohol and drugs. And so if there's some, you feel like there's some sort of problem or if the student needs to be seen, we can talk to them about that. Because sometimes when they get to college, you know, they start experimenting and we do have services available to them for those type of um, service, you know, behavioral issues. Uh, we also have a basic radiology. We do not, it's digital x-ray, but we do not, we cannot do like MRI, CT scans. And so we would refer those out, but we do have x-ray services on site that will be able to help them with the clinicians diagnosing any kind of issues that they might have. Um, and we also have a lab. It is a basic lab, but it covers most everything 
that you generally would have when you go to your client, your primary doctor at home. And we also have a pharmacy on site that does take all insurances. So if you have a prescription that your student needs to transfer, you can call our pharmacy and they will call and get that transferred and you can use your insurance. And we do have self-care boxes and we try to keep it as low as possible to be competitive because you know students need you know, their medication. And so um, next slide. And so a lot of, uh, actually I had an issue this morning with the parent. Um, a lot of times what we get is um, they say that they're FERPA, that they signed their FERPA of form. Since we are medical facilities, we do go by HIPAA. So since the most children, the student is going to be 18, they do have rights, even though they are on your insurance, most likely, they still have rights. And so we cannot speak to you regarding whatever ailment they have come to us for without their consent. And so the issue that I had today was the parent was saying, what's well, my insurance? I realized it might be your insurance, but your student still has rights at 18. And on our website, we do have a confidential communication form that they can fill out giving us permission to speak with you. And that is really the only way we will be able to speak with them, with you about your, your student's healthcare issues, even concerning their insurance, because the FERPA form will not transfer over into us at Student Health. We are governed by the medical HIPAA. So they will need to sign that confidential communication form for us to be able to speak with you. And that it does include parents, and fact, and any kind of professors. If a professor calls, we cannot speak to them about any kind of ailment unless the student has given us permission to do so. We uh, strictly adhere to their rights. So, um, how we work is you pay student health and wellness fee in your tuition. It is ninety-five dollars. Part of that fee goes to student health services, and the other part goes to student counseling center. In order to be seen at our clinic, you have to pay that student health and wellness fee. Uh, most, most of your students are probably undergrads, so that fee will not be waived. But for graduate students, that fee is waived. And if they're a distance student, that fee is also waived, but they can also elect to pay. If they live in the state of Texas, we can see them telehealth life. We do accept most major insurances. And uh, the reason that it's important to pay that student health and wellness fee is because it has to stand for something. So it stands for the deductible copay and, insur and co insurances. So we actually will build the insurance, and whatever the insurance pays, we will write off the difference. And the student does not pay anything up front to us unless for some reason the insurance is denied. So I do encourage you to speak with your insurance to find out whether or not we are in your network because we find sometimes it's an issue when people are moving from different areas of Texas that Lubbock is not in their network, especially if you have insurance in the marketplace, your marketplace insurance is only good for your market and that market is where you live. And so a lot of them times the insurance does not transfer to Lubbock. So I do encourage you to speak with your insurance to see whether or not we are in network. And the only other thing is again, pharmaceuticals, it'll be an out of pocket, whatever deductible expense. If you don't have insurance, the student health and wellness fee counts for something and that counts for getting a 60 to 70 percent discount off the self-pay price that the, um, from the health science center. And so uh, what we'll do is we'll take this of that discount and add it to their tuition fees. It'll be, you'll see that on their email. And then that's where you'll pay for the services. And so um, we do provide a good faith estimate. So when the student calls, they will know approximately how much it's going to be when they come to student health. The average visit is between $30 and $50. It depends. That's just to see the physician, the clinician. If you have labs or x-rays, that's when the price of the visit is going to go up because due to the, the labs or the x-rays. And sometimes we aren't going to be really sure until they actually see the clinician to see what um, they're going to order. And so we do try to keep it as closely as possible. You can always call and ask, and we'll be happy to talk to you about different cost options. And we do have um, contract out with a company called Academic Health Plan, and that we do have an insurance that is specifically designed for Texas Tech students that you can purchase. Um, it's run basically on an academic period for um, fall. The open enrollment has already begun in, in September 18th. And so that's going to be for the fall semester. It's August 1st. 
through January, January 31st. And then spring, it's kind of spring, summer. It goes from January 1st to July 31st. It kind of helps students who don't take summer classes or somehow if they're graduating or doing internships, then that covers them through the summer. And so that's why the spring, summer is like that. So you can also always go and talk to them. You can call me and ask me about it. But the website to register and look at this is tpu.myahcare.com. We are part of the Health Sciences Center. And so we are part of uh, My Team Care, which is a, um, an app which they can download onto their, their computers or phones. And this is where you can request an appointment. You can see any kind of lab that was done, what the results were. You can request refills. You can look at any kind of notes that the, the clinician has written. It's the best way to keep interactive with what your your um, your visit here at Student Health. It kind of gives you a, a most accurate, um, clear vision of why you were seen, and then it's the best way to request an appointment and make sure that if they do have maintenance drugs, keep all of those 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 skills so that they're not missing any kind of prescriptions that they need. I don't, and again, if you want to, you can always call us at 743-2848. We'll be happy to answer any of your questions regarding your insurance that you might have, whether it's good here, um, what you might expect as you come to Texas Tech. Um, we do have a no-show policy, so if a student is going to, they need to give us at least 24-hour notice before they can get the appointment. We do that is so that we only have limited spots, so if somebody needs to be seen, we can throw that appointment if necessary. If um, you have any further questions, just call us, and we'll be happy to talk to you. And this is part of our team, and so um, that is our website. We are part of we are a health science center department, but we only serve our Texas Tech team. So I'm not sure what the next part is. So I'm going to turn it over to Kayla with the Student Counseling Center. And again, if you have any further questions for us, just please let us know we're here to help. Hi there, my name is Dr. Kayla. I work at the Student Counseling Center and our staff is comprised of licensed um, therapeutic practitioners, as well as several trainees who are working on um, graduation and getting licensed. So we offer therapeutic services along with a couple other things up at the Student Counseling Center. So our hours are Monday through Fridays, eight to five. Our services are available to any TTU enrolled student. And that includes all semesters in which they would be enrolled. So fall, spring, both summer sessions. Our services are offered on a voluntary basis. So we don't do court ordered or mandated therapy. Um, all of our services are fully covered by their student service health and wellness fee. We don't accept insurance. There's no out-of-pocket costs. We do, however, have a $25 no-show fee. That is if someone does not show up to their appointment um, without calling or sending an email, getting in touch with the therapist or front desk in some way before the start of the appointment. Generally speaking, therapists determine what treatment is appropriate for um, our clients when they come in. And if necessary, we do make referrals for outside counseling, especially if long-term care is needed, or there's something just kind of outside the scope of what we can offer in our clinic. All of our services are completely confidential, very similar to student health. So all of our contacts are completely confidential. That's in accordance with Texas state law. To the extent that our employees at the counseling center will not even verify whether or not a student is in our care. Um, we cannot verify that information. So if we have parents call in um, to ask if a student is being seen, we cannot answer that question. That is something that has to be taken up between the student and their parents or guardians. So we don't give any information. We don't share any information, whether that be with professors, other professionals within student health, outside counselors without express written permission and a re release of information statement that has been signed off on by the student themselves. So a lot of the services we offer um, include what most people would think of, which is our individual therapy services. 
Those are for personal concerns that students come in with. It's probably what comes to mind for most people. We also offer group therapy. We have quite a number of groups running every semester. Um, we try to limit group therapy to between to around 12 student participants at a time per group. Um, and we make sure that group is a good fit for that individual before recommending that service as well. We offer a, a specialty group called Manager Mood. Manager Mood is a group um, that meets on a rolling basis throughout the semester and helps with a lot of um, our most common concerns that students come in with. Um, basic anxiety, depression, social skills management, um, homesickness, adjustment to college, living on your own, things like that. We do offer a service called Therapy Assistance Online. This is a self-help therapeutic resource, and that is available online for students to use at their convenience. They can do it very self-guided. We can also offer um, therapy or therapy guided um, therapy assistance online, and that is a 30-minute session with a therapist to guide them through the process of doing the online piece. We also have a mind spa within our offices, and that is open to any student. They don't have to be directly involved in counseling services at the time um, they make appointments for that. That is basically a relaxation room. We offer biofeedback training for stress management in that room. We have a massage chair, weighted blankets, um, yoga equipment. Um, we have a VR virtual reality setup as well. We offer bibliotherapy, so that could include workbooks or reading recommendations for students who aren't necessarily looking for um, an individual therapy one-on-one -on -one type experience. We do offer couples therapy as well, as long as both students are enrolled in Texas Tech. We do consultations with faculty, staff, parents, um, anyone who's interested. We do offer different outreaches, such as the one we're doing today here. Um, and we also have lots of our services available, both in person and online. So we do offer telehealth options as well for those who might not be able to make it in, in person to see us as well. All and, right, well, I wanna thank both of our presenters. Oh, sorry, Kayla, did you have something else that you wanted to say? No, that should do it, thank you. Okay, wonderful. Um, so we heard an overview of both student health services and student counseling um, center. And so we would love to be able to answer your questions. Um, so please use the Zoom Q&A feature. I'll ask some of these out loud. We also have folks behind the scenes um, to help answer these questions. Um, and so one of the questions I see um, is about grief. So if someone has lost someone in their family, um, are there options for students to talk to a counselor about grief specific issues? Yes, so we grief is a very common um, presenting concern that we see in the counseling center, very appropriate for them to come in, make an appointment with us. Our walk-in clinic hours, which is how um, clients establish in-person um, care with us, are between 12.30 and 3.30. So they just walk in, they don't need an appointment, and we'll get them set up with an intake session at that point. And we are also going to be starting up our grief group starting in the fall semester as well. So that's a group uh, that students regularly meet and talk through yes. with, other, with other peers. Mm -hmm. And that's led by a therapist as well. And then I also see a question here. Is, is there's group assistance available for those with Asperger's? Can you speak to that? I know that we also have the Burkhart Center here on campus. Yes, so we do not at this time specifically offer um, any groups relating to autism spectrum. We do have several interpersonal process groups, um, which sometimes fill those needs. There's some overlap there, um, but it is not um, ASD specific. We do do a lot of referral through the Burkhart Center, um, which specializes in um, ASD services. And so they are a great referral source for us. And we also um, welcome individuals with different ASD diagnoses for individual therapy as well. Thank you. Okay, so this is a question um, and I, it looks like Michaela is typing an answer to this one, but I would also like to address it live because I'm sure that others have a question similar to this. So can um, a student transfer their allergy shots or other medications to um, the pharmacy here on campus? How does that work? Um, are you mm -hmm. able to answer that, Jennifer? 
Uh -huh. uh, we do not do allergy shots. Uh, there's a I lot of uh, different components to an allergy shot that our clinic does not do because it's so specific from your allergist to determine another allergist really should clinically take care of that. So they would need to speak with their allergist about oh, who in the Lubbock area they would recommend because we do not do allergy shots. Uh, for other kind of medications, you would just call our pharmacy at 806-743-2636 and you can transfer any other kind of um, ma ma maintenance medications. We just don't do allergy shots at this time. Uh, it's just kind of, it gets very complicated in terms of, re uh, of reactions. And so uh, since it's very specific to a student, uh, I would encourage them to speak with their allergist to see who would they would recommend in the Lubbock area who can monitor the proper report. All right, thank you. So if I know we're having some audio issues, if you were not able to hear the answer, um, the pharmacy here on campus cannot do allergy shots, but they can get other, you can get other types of medications transferred over there. You just need to call the pharmacy to do that. Um, and then here's an interesting question. Um, can a student have their asthma medication with them at all times? Is oh, absolutely. That is something that if you are very asthmatic, I would recommend you would take have you with that at all times. Um, it, that is not a controlled kind of substance that you would need a doctor's note for. Uh, so absolutely, you can carry that around and there should not be any kind of issues. I would encourage if they're going to be living in the residence hall, definitely tell their RAs and any kind of medical conditions that they might have so that they can be more aware of your situation in case you do have an asthma attack, where's that medication and how can they help them? But yes, you can carry in, in medications like that around uh, the campus and they have it on you at all times. I would encourage you to do so. Another question that we got, um, if someone could just take a second to put the number to the pharmacy in the chat, <laughs> if we can get that in there, that would be helpful um, to them. I'll do that right now. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and then another person has asked, uh, I'll follow up with you about the recording on the call. Don't worry about that. I'll send that to your email um, and I'll share that link here in a second. Um, but someone has asked, and this is a question for student counseling. Is there a charge for um, for students accessing online individual or group therapy? Um, they were having some issues logging on and maybe didn't hear um, at the beginning. Yeah, no problem. So for the counseling center, all of our services are included in that student health and wellness fee. There is no out of pocket cost. Um, the only cost that does potentially come up is if there is a no call, no show. And that's a twenty five dollar fee that is charged to the student business account. Awesome. Um, question has come up. Do students need to be registered for student health services or are they registered at orientation? Um, again, and I know uh, Jennifer can hop on too, but I really it's just part of paying that student services fees. That's part of your student's tuition. They don't have to register separately to be part of and have access to student health services. No, but once for their first appointment, they will be a, a, like an online, we'll, we'll send them information again to create a chart for them. But once you pay that, you're automatically, once you pay that tuition, it's on that fee is on there. And so unless it's exempted off, which typically for undergrads, it is not, um, yeah, you are automatically enrolled into our services. And then uh, when does the counseling center open? So will it be open um, during, um, right after move-in or, or when, when can students access it? Yes, so we are open actually more than um, the more dates in the academic calendar. So we are here typically during breaks as well um, for students who might um, have access to campus. For students who are starting in the fall, we are open to students who will be enrolled in the fall semester starting move-in day. That is when they can start seeking services with us and get established in our care. Awesome. Let's see. Because I think moving day is that weekend of August 7th, that Monday. It can start um, as early as August 12th. And I know that, that new students will be receiving an email very shortly from housing about selecting their time slot. Right. And so once they start moving in, it's open for student health as well. Awesome.
Oh, can you all speak to where your location is on campus so our, our uh, folks will know? We are in one building. We are in the Student Wellness Center on the corner of Flint and Maine. I think there's a lot of misconceptions. People call us the Student Wellness Clinics, but we're actually, that's the name of our building and we're two separate clinics. The student Health is on the first floor and Student Counseling is on the second floor. And so, but we are in the student wellness building on the corner of Flint and Main, both of our services. And I'll add that we do offer visitor parking for um, if it's a bit of a distance for them to come in. So they do have a place to park at our building as well as needed. And I believe if I'm not mistaken, there's also a campus bus stop very nearby. If, if your yes. student doesn't have a car and needs to ride the bus to the clinic. Keep your questions coming. I do want to share on the screen contact information um, for all of our departments. So um, you can find our websites there. I've also have put those in the chat for you. Um, <clears throat> here in a second, I'll share the chat or the link to where you can find the recording to this webinar. We're also going to follow up with an email <clears throat> to you about that. Please take a second to take our, our very quick two question survey about today's webinar. We'd love to hear your feedback. Um, we still have just a couple of minutes, so keep those questions coming and we will answer those um, in the chat for you. And um, just wanna thank everyone for being here. Um, thanks for spending some time with us this afternoon. And thank you to both of our presenters. Um, we know that mental health and physical health is always on folks' minds um, as you're sending a student off to college and just want to um, let you know that these are some great resources to help your student. Um, so thanks everyone for being here. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and turn off our video, but we will stay behind and answer your questions in the chat. Um, so thank you once again. Have a great rest of your day. Our next webinar is one week from today, and it's on campus safety, another topic that's on a lot of folks' minds as, um, you know, students are about to start their very first semester at Texas Tech. So be sure and join us for that one. You can sign up the very same place where you signed up for this one. Um, so thanks, everyone. Have a great day and keep those questions coming.